Once Fred falls victim to the evil glitch, we see the corrupt faces of several more recognizable cartoon characters. We see Peppa Pig. What? No, no, no. We see Porky Pig from Looney Tunes. I literally almost wrote Peppa Pig on my script. Learning with Pippi is an all-new Adult Swim and Cartoon Network pilot that was released this past weekend. The idea puts a horror spin on the cartoon multiverse. A character from a fictional educational cartoon, named Pippi, joins forces with a group of misfit original characters on a journey to channel surf through Cartoon Network's history and defeat a monstrous glitch that is corrupting all the cartoons we know and love. This is a story pitch that I feel has a ton of potential. Please check out the original video on Adult Swim's YouTube channel. Give it a like rating and leave a comment to help it become a full true series. I also made a video the other day detailing my thoughts on why this show seems like such a fantastic and fun idea, so if you're interested in hearing more of my opinions, please check out my previous video. In this video, I want to run through the trailer again and point out all the animation references that I can recognize. I did the same thing forever ago with the OKKO OK crossover, because, well, I know far too much about cartoons. I'm always making videos about the latest cartoon news, cartoon trivia, and other super niche things that I like. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing to my channel for more cartoon content. Now let's get started on the list. If there are any references that I miss or mess up, please feel free to politely mention it in the comments. It's not really possible for me to know everything, so I'd appreciate any help. Our first reference is Pibby herself. This cartoon world is completely original, but it's obviously inspired by preschool television in general, like shows from PBS, Nick Jr., and now Cartoon Network's Cartoonito Block. There really isn't a specific reference here. The way it teaches words and such seems very in line with Sesame Street to me, and the visual appearance of the world reminds me of Wow Wow Wubsy. But yeah, the world here is intentionally generic. Is there any specific preschool show that it reminds you of? Let me know! After the glitch appears, and, well, the, the glitch is definitely based on TV static and, like, TV-based glitching. That's a weird thing to specify, but a TV glitching is kind of different from how, like, a computer screen and such glitches. It sort of feels like a corrupted video edit as well. I mean, just look at my channel aesthetic. I know a lot about glitching. But once Pippi enters the credits of her series, the credits that are shown are the actual credits for this production listing off the real creator and producer of this short. Also, naturally, the Cartoon Network Studios logo appears at the end, just like it does for all other CN shows. Though despite Pippi ultimately being a horror show made for Adult Swim, this shows that its in-universe television world takes place under Cartoon Network's label, which is why we mostly see Cartoon Network characters throughout this trailer. It's also been said by some people that apparently this short film was produced by CN's animation division, not Adult Swim's. But of course the mature content of the series makes it something that needs to be broadcasted and shared under Adult Swim's branding. Pretty sure Close Enough is the same way. That's made by Cartoon Network but it's an adult show, so it's been put on HBO Max and TBS. Next Pippi enters the superhero cartoon world. This one once again is a completely original setting made to parody the thousands of superhero cartoons that there's been. Most of these productions coming from Cartoon Network and Warner Brothers, mainly referencing DC Comics cartoons, which come from Cartoon Network and Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers is CN's parent company. Well, technically, Turner Broadcasting is CN's parent, and then Warner Brothers is Turner's parent, and then Warner Media is the parent of them, and then AT&T is their parent. But let's not get too technical, this short's already meta enough as it is. The characters here, to me anyways, seem like references to Superman and Robin. Even though, of course, Robin is a Batman sidekick, he's the most well-known sidekick character in media. And Robin's often parodied and stuff to be a geeky weakling. This world also kind of has a similar look to the recent series Invincible, but that has nothing to do with Cartoon Network. It's probably just a coincidence, since Invincible is also attempting to, like, parody and subvert the usual look of a superhero cartoon. The sidekick character here, whose name is Beta Kid according to some leaked information, is actually a member of the series' main cast. He'd be journeying with Pibby if this were a full series. Next, the two characters enter the world of Bedrock, home of Fred Flintstone. You know, the guy from the serial. And also a classic 1960s cartoon called The Flintstones. Flintstones? Do you think there are kids now that think The Flintstones are only serial box characters? We see Fred riding a brontosaurus and riding down its tail, which is an iconic little sequence from the series. In this show's prehistoric world, these dinosaurs are used to assist in construction and transportation. Fred works as a Bronto crane operator. But why am I going into so much detail about this? Does anybody actually care about the Flintstones in 2021? Once Fred falls victim to the evil glitch, we see the corrupt faces of several more recognizable cartoon characters. We see Peppa Pig. What? No, no, no. We see Porky Pig from Looney Tunes. I literally almost wrote Peppa Pig on my script. 
Amethyst from Steven Universe, Bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls, Finn Mertens from Adventure Time, Dee Dee from Dexter's Laboratory, Gumball from The Amazing World of Gumball, and Craig from Craig of the Creek. Next we see a corrupt Scooby-Doo world. Unfortunately I'm not much of a Scooby-Doo fan so I don't know for sure if this is an actual location from the series or if this amusement park is just sort of a generic made up Scooby-Doo styled location. If you know what it's supposed to be please share it. I know there was a park in the new Scoob movie. From a quick google search this looks like a setting from a 1969 Scooby-Doo Where Are You episode? Foul Play in Funland. Which, wow 1969? Scooby-Doo is super old. Naturally, in this world, we see corrupt versions of Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby. I guess Shaggy didn't have time to charge all his powers and he ended up getting caught here. Yeah, I had to make that joke. You, ha you have to make that joke. It's too easy to make that. Then we see Pippi discovering she has blood inside of a wealthy dog mansion. This is very likely a reference to DuckTales, just like, you know, the dog version of it to avoid copyright. It definitely has a Disney-style look to these characters in the background. We also see what are likely alternate versions of Webby and Louie as dogs. We also meet this evil cat lady, who is another original character, and who would also be a main cast member if this were a full series. Her name is Molri- Her name is Molri- Mol- Molri- Her name is Molira, according to leaked information. That's a- that's a really hard name for me to say for some reason. She's a Disney villain-inspired character, made to be similar to Corella Deville from 101 Dalmatians, and Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Though some people have pointed out that her design resembles some other cat characters, like Sophia Kitty from An American Tale. There are a lot of cat characters out there though, so I guess we can't say for sure. This short trailer implies that she would have a bit of a character arc. She'd start out villainous and rude, but slowly discover empathy and work to save the world and protect the young and innocent Pippi. Next, Pippi travels to the Adventure Time world of Ooh, and is hiding from demonic shells of what used to be Finn and Jake. Adventure Time had two zombie-themed episodes, so this really reminds me of those, especially considering the setting, too. This background is one of Princess Bubblegum's labs from her castle in the Candy Kingdom. It might even be an actual background asset from the original show. It looks very accurate to me. Adventure Time fans are really impressive analysts, so I'm sure someone out there knows if that's a real background or not. Whatever the case, this sequence reminds me a lot of the episode From Bad to Worse, which is one of the zombie episodes I mentioned. There's a lot of time spent inside the lab in that episode. Also, should we nitpick that Finn has his golden sword here? Finn has a lot of different swords throughout the series, this is just kind of the one that there's most reference material for, I guess. Jake does end up using his stretching powers here, so, I mean, they knew about Adventure Time. Next, as Pippi explains to her group that they're the only ones left, they are inside of, uh, some forest at night. This is too generic looking for me to point out what it may be. If you have any ideas, let me know. Maybe it's another part of the superhero world since that's what they're talking about here? Though it seemed like Pippi was in the superhero world first, before she met Malria. I wonder if they even thought about continuity to that extent, considering this is only a sample trailer though. Next we see Pippi using the power of love with an off-brand Care Bear Bunny character. She's in a sky setting which has a really similar coloring scheme to the city of Carolot from the Care Bear series. The Care Bears aren't owned by Cartoon Network, but they do apparently have a new show that's on Boomerang right now. Next we see the characters in a black and white world, which could point to any sort of 1920s or 1930s cartoon. Could be Mickey Mouse, Oswald, Betty Boop, Felix the Cat, anything really. What do you think? For some reason my mind thinks Felix the Cat or Betty Boop are most likely. Those often had, like, city settings. Given the horror nature of this whole concept, this setting actually makes me think about the Suicide Mouse Creepypasta. Is that something people even still know about? Uh, oh, okay, there's a Friday Night Funkin' mod for it, apparently. I guess people do know about it. Once the distorted version of the Pippi theme song starts playing, it's performed by the same singer that does the version at the beginning. It's just sung at a slower tempo and pitched down to sound creepy. Next we see a dramatic scene taking place inside of what is likely a Wily E. Coyote world from the Looney Tunes. Beta Kid and Malria seem to have weapons referencing Looney Tunes as well. A goofy cartoon hammer and a Marvin the Martian style ray gun. It's also worth noting that in the leaked pitch document, it is mentioned that Pippi's design would evolve throughout the series as she would counter more adversity. Clearly here the poor girl looks much different than she does at the start. Then we see a cave scene which is again too generic to clarify followed by Pippi using a ray gun and flying with an Acme brand rocket, which is another Looney Tunes reference. Dozens of objects throughout Looney Tunes are labeled with this fictional Acme brand. I'm sure you've seen that before somewhere. It's in a lot of stuff even beyond Looney Tunes. Can't say I know what this big realistic gun is referencing though, but it, it must be something. Kind of seems like a anime thing, like a psychopath thing. 
but I'm sure that's probably not what the reference is supposed to be. Then we see Beta Kid and Mel Rhea running away in the mystery machine from Scooby-Doo. Mel Rhea fires a pistol that turns out to be a fake prop. This gag is used in a lot of things, so it's not necessarily a reference to a specific thing, it's more of a cartoons in general sort of thing. But in my mind, I most commonly associate this with the Joker for Batman and Looney Tunes as well. Next we see Pippi on a bus, which is clearly inside of the city of O-Town from Rocco's Modern Life. The architecture and coloring makes that a pretty clear reference. Surprising to see this here since it's a Nickelodeon show, but that's actually not the only Nick reference we get. We get another one later on. Next we see a racing world, which is a little too generic for me once again. Maybe a reference to the wacky races, or perhaps even Speed Racer? Let me know if you get this. Next is a forest scene, which is, once again, a little too generic looking. I can't tell where this may be. The only jungly forest show that I could think of is like Wild Thornberries. Maybe this is like a Jungle Book or Tarzan thing considering the Disney stuff? Well, whatever the case, we do see a new character here in the form of a corrupted George Jetson from the Jetsons. Another 1960s Warner Brothers classic. I don't think that this forest is meant to be the Jetsons world though. That was all in space and stuff. After that, we get the second Nickelodeon reference. Pippi finds herself in SpongeBob's world, or likely, you know, some off-brand version. Bob Sponge. But the background design here is really spot on to how Spongebob scenery is drawn. It's impressive. In fact, this is literally just Spongebob's bathroom. It's the exact design seen in some of the episodes. Then we see the gang enter a live action commercial, which isn't an actual commercial, it's just a parody of one that you would see during children's programming. I always wonder if the kids that are in things like this are allowed to watch these shows. Like, clearly this would be too violent for this kid to ever see it. But what, he just recorded this and it was just like, okay, yay. <laughs> like. <laughs> I always wonder about that. Finally, we get to the juiciest part, the endgame style face-off with Pibby, cartoon favorites, and the glitch monster. This is back inside of the Learning with Pibby cartoon homeworld. Here we see Lady Rainicorn from Adventure Time, who is drawn based off her appearance in the pilot, even down to her circular mouth. In the pilot of Adventure Time, she didn't speak Korean, she just like spoke in gibberish and had a very circular mouth. But in the full series, she speaks Korean and, well, has a normal mouth. It's really weird that they use this as reference. Did they like get bad reference material from CN or something? I think my guess is more so that it was probably easier to animate her without the rainbow on her body. So they just like made her all pink. But then how come they kept the mouth circular? Is that just like a coincidence? And of course, we also see a lot of other characters here. We see Buttercup from the Powerpuff Girls, Lion from Steven Universe, Darwin from The Amazing World of Gumball, Muriel from Courage the Cowardly Dog. She's holding a big mallet, which is also a reference to an iconic joke from that series. Unikitty from the Lego movie and also the Unikitty spin-off TV series, Samurai Jack from Samurai Jack, Johnny and Plank from Ed and Eddie, and The Scream from like the the painting. Yeah, okay. So to my knowledge, none of these other characters here are real ones. They're just made up for the sequence. Though they might be referencing other works and be like knockoff brand type stuff, though I can't quite think of what the reference may be for most of them. One of them kind of looks like uh, Spunky from Rocco's, but so Spunky doesn't like walk like a human. In the next scene here, we see corrupt Velma again, and what I'm guessing is corrupt Jake the dog again as well. Then Bugs Bunny from Looney Tunes, another made up dog from the DuckTales knockoff. This one is orange, so I guess it's closest to Huey, even though Huey wears red. And there we go. That was mostly every reference. That was way more than I expected, honestly. It's amazing they could fit so many cameos and an interesting story within such an incredibly short piece of animation. I made sure to go into detail about most of the references, since many of them are from far back in Cartoon Network's massive catalog of cartoons. So I hope you enjoyed that. Plus, isn't it amazing that they also ended up referencing Disney and Nickelodeon as well? I feel like, in particular, it's really rare to see Nickelodeon references in other media. Are they really strict with copyright or something? I think Family Guy mentioned Spongebob like once, and that blew my mind as a kid. Because it's really rare to see those sorts of references. Nickelodeon is one of the big TV cartoon powerhouses, so I really wonder why we don't see more of them. So what was your favorite reference in here? And what characters do you hope to see appear if this ends up becoming a full series? Let me know in the comments. The sky is the limit there. Even if the real characters can't appear, they can make up off-brand versions like they did here for DuckTales. I'm a big Adventure Time fan. Seeing that Adventure Time scene on Twitter is what pulled me over to watch this cool trailer in the first place. I really hope this becomes a full series. It seems like a lot of fun. Once again, let me know if I missed or confused any of these references I listed. And please show your support for the original Pippi trailer upload so we can see this amazing idea become a real series. If you want to hear my extended review and discussion, please check out my previous video. 
Leave some comments about your theories and expectations for this series too. I got a ton of comments on my previous video about this show, so I'm probably going to do another video where I reply to comments and share my thoughts as well. Thanks for watching. Please leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to know when I post new videos. Thanks for watching, and super special thanks to my Patreon supporters. Support me on Patreon and you'll be able to submit video topics, see exclusive behind the scenes content, and help me keep this channel going. Also follow me on Twitter and TikTok for special updates.